Can you spot the difference between these two raw files? Well, how about now if I zoom into 400%? As I move around this scene, I'm viewing this on a 32 inch monitor, and I just can't find differences between these two versions of the image. And that's exactly the point, because the difference here is not in the image quality, it's actually in the file size. On the left is my original Nikon RAW, my NEF file, which is a full 51 megabytes. And on the right is a new lossy DNG I've created with Lightroom, and it's only six megabytes. It's 85% smaller than the original. So just think about that. I could store almost 10 times as many full quality RAW files on my laptop using the new compressed format versus the original from the camera. Now, just to give you a sense of how good this is, let's take another close look. We're at 400% here. Let's go even closer. We go to 800%, 1600% here. At this level here, I don't see any difference in image quality between these two versions of the image. Now, there are some slight differences. If you really look closely here, there's a little bit of a yellowing that I don't see here. But we're zoomed in so close, that this would be unprintable at this level of scaling because there's not enough resolution. So these artifacts are insignificant compared to the fact I just don't have enough resolution for them to even matter. So as far as I'm concerned, even though they're not identical, the lossy version here is for all practical purposes the same as a lossless version. And I'm very excited about the capability of a file which is a tenth the size of the original. So how do you create these? You want to go to the library module. You want to go pick your original file. It could be a NEF. It could be a DNG you already created with Adobe, but it wasn't already compressed. Just take this file and go choose export. And then in the export dialog, what you want to do is change the image format over to DNG and you want to turn on use lossy compression. Now this option has been around for a while. In fact, you can go all the way back to camera raw six compatibility and you'll have the option. What's new is that with camera raw version 15.3 and later, you get a much smaller file because you're using a new JPEG XL compression standard. And that's the magic behind this image. So you're going to get incredible results with this. And we'll do a few exports in a moment, but I do want to note there's a few caveats with this. Anytime you convert images, if you want to take your images and compress them, first of all, you need to be very careful because if you delete the wrong file, you're going to lose data. I wouldn't go out and do a batch conversion of all your images to try and shrink them. The other is there is some potential loss here. As you saw, the image is visually the same today, but there is some potential difference in the future. Let's cancel this for a second. And let's take a look at what's actually different between these files. So here's my original NEF. Here is the lossy one. Let's go create one more. I'm actually going to export a regular one. So I'm going to pick, I've got a template here to convert to lossy and I'm going to turn off the lossy option. So this will just export to the same location and put it in the catalog. I have this option to add to catalog and export to the same location. So I can very quickly convert images by exporting to the same place and then just delete the original one. I'm convinced that I'm okay with the conversion. So we'll say export. It has the same file name. I'm going to go and say use a unique name. So now I'm going to have both the compressed and the uncompressed DNG here. And if you want to find which is which, there's a couple of things you can do. If you didn't name the file very carefully, you can go in the metadata filters for Lightroom, go to file type. And then in here, you can choose raw, which will be my original from the camera or digital negative lossless, this is the, the DNG you normally would be working with, or the lossy compressed. And that's the new file I've created that's much, much smaller. And, and just to compare these, let's jump back to the disk here. You can see that here's my NEF at 51. And then here's the normal lossless DNG. So when you create a regular DNG, you actually are saving some space already, but you're not getting that in huge improvement in size reduction until you use the lossy option to lose a little bit of quality, but I would argue is not visibly detectable. So that's one way you could find the difference between these files is by sorting by file type. I'm going to show all these again. The other is within the library here, you've got the metadata area. And if you change the tab over DNG, it will tell you everything about DNG files. So if I go and click on my original NEF, I don't see anything because a NEF is not a DNG. And then if I go click on a regular DNG, we'll see that it's showing, um, actually, this is my compressed one. It's showing lossy compression, yes. So this is my compressed file. And the other thing you'll note here is mosaic data is no. And that's the caveat with these files that we don't have the original sensor data. It's a linear DNG, and this can affect things like using the new Adobe AI denoise. 
If I go look at a regular lossless version here, you'll see that it says no on the lossy compression, but yes on the mosaic data. And here's the difference. If I right click and I go choose enhance, I have the ability to use Adobe Denoise on this version of the image. And in fact, I'll go ahead and run it and create a new uncompressed DNG, which we could then compress. And then here's my already compressed version. If I right click this and go to enhance, I don't have the option. So if you're gonna use Denoise or some tool that has to work with the mosaic data, you need to do it first before you go and use the lossy compression, because once you've done that, you won't have the mosaic data to go back and make that change. So let's see here, this should be my new, uh, where is it here? It is my enhanced version. So here's the one where I've done the noise reduction. It still shows the mosaic data, and then I can go right click, or actually uh, export and compress it. So go export, and I'm gonna go to my convert to lossy DNG. So it's gonna export to the same location, add to the catalog, I always do a little bit of renaming here. If we look at the naming convention, I add lossy DNG to the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and export this as a lossy DNG to the same place. And then when it does this, give it a second to catch up. Here you can see is my enhanced version, which is the lossy DNG. And if we go back to disk here, we can see there it is, it's a four megabyte file. So actually running AID noise, not only improved the noise, it actually made for a smaller file because grain or noise don't compress as well. That's a level of detail that bloats the file a bit to six megabytes. So I've gone all the way from my original, which was 51 megabytes, down to four. So it's more than 10 times smaller at this point and improved. But I just wanted to note that that is the caveat that tools like AID noise, if you use this compression now, you might not be able to use them in the future. And that would affect things like DxO's pure raw tool, or perhaps some other future tools that might rely on the mosaic data. So just know that that's a potential caveat here. But the capabilities, I think, are absolutely incredible. And let's take a look at some comparisons here. I'm gonna go find my original here, and let's just uh, turn off the coloration on these others here. So here's my actual original NEF, and I'm gonna work with this one, even though I could use any of the lossless compressed DNGs as well. And I wanna create some derivatives using the templates I've made. So I'm gonna go to Export, I've already used this one to create a new version in the catalog, but that's just if I want to compress a file for my own use. If I want to share it with someone, I may want to consider doing something else. I could resize to a smaller resolution and get an even smaller but still raw file. So this would definitely reduce some quality, but it's still going to be a great file and it'll shrink it even further. So I've got a few different templates here. I've got one to just copy my original, which we can use for comparison. I have one that'll convert to a standard DNG. Then I've got one which is gonna be the full resolution, but lossy, so I've turned on the lossy compression. And then these next three are lossy with a reduction in the file size as well. So here I have one that's 2560 pixels on the long edge, meaning that I'm gonna shrink this down to the size of a smart preview for comparison's sake or 12 megapixel, which I like because I'm used to the D700 as an old camera of mine and it was 12 megapixel and I'm very comfortable with the quality I get at that level. Or if I need it for video, I've got a 4K option. I'm resizing to 3840 on the long edge for 4K. So let's go ahead and export all of these. They're all gonna go to the same location. I'll just get multiple versions at the same time. So we'll batch export, choose export, and we'll see them populating over here in just a second. So up top is just a copy of the original raw file. Nothing was done to it, it's the same 51 megs. Then our standard DNG, which as you see is a little bit smaller. It's still lossless, it's visually the exact same. Then we have our lossy DNG, which is visually, I would say indistinguishable, but there's some minor loss of quality, but it's very trivial. And then these next ones are the ones where we've actually reduced the resolution, and these are definitely lower quality. So here is the lossy DNG at 12 megapixel limit. It's on a two megs. 4K at 1.8, and the 2560, so it's of the size of a smart preview, is down under one megabyte. So if I need to send someone some small files, maybe like proxy files, so I can have a friend edit some images for me, I could send more than 50 files of this size to them. They could edit them, send it back to me, and I could just copy the settings back to my file. It's an incredibly flexible thing to do. And let's just take a look and see how these compare by opening it up in Photoshop. So I'm gonna take the original, and I'm gonna take my reduced resolution version here and just open these up in Photoshop so we can see the scale difference. 
So if I click for 100%, here we have our 2560 version. Obviously it looks great, but this is about the limit of this file. And then over here is the full resolution. And at 100%, there's obviously a lot more detail. So if I'm gonna print, obviously I wanna stick with the original, but if I use this lower resolution, I still have all the raw capabilities here. I can do all the same editing just at a lower resolution. So it's incredibly powerful. And now to learn more tips and tricks for Lightroom, click to this next video.